This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another informational Valheim video. Today we're going to cover pretty much everything you need to know about Valheim Plus. Let's get to it. So we're here on the Valheim Plus website and it's Valheim.plus. That's the website. This website is going to be your main source for everything Valheim Plus obviously, and it's an absolutely fantastic resource for this mod. They have great documentation, everything and anything you would want to know. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come over here to installation. Now you have a couple of different options here on where you want to download from. If you download from direct download, it's zipped twice, so you have to unpack it twice to get to the files that you need. Uh, from GitHub, I don't know, those files are weird and it's not the same files. The sub files you download from GitHub are not the same files you get in the direct download or the Nexus download. I haven't tested the Thunderstore download. I assume it's the same as the Nexus Plus mod download. Anyway, just download the mod from Nexus Plus. It's super easy. Go over there, make a free account, download it. That's where I downloaded it from. That's where I'm suggesting you download it from. And if you download it from there, following this guide is going to be super easy. You click that link, it's going to take you to Nexus Plus. You download the mod, it's going to be a zip file. You want to unpack that zip file. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to go over to Steam. You're going to find Valheim. You're going to right click on it and you're going to click browse local files. That's going to take you to where you have installed Valheim. Then everything that you unpacked out of that zip file, you are just going to drop in the Valheim folder. That's it, you've just installed Valheim Plus. It's that easy to do. If for some reason it asks you to overwrite any files, it did not for me, didn't ask me to overwrite a thing, just copied over fine, but if for some reason it does, tell it yes. Unless it's asking to overwrite your Valheim underscore plus dot CFG file, then tell it no. That's your config file and we're going to talk about that here in a minute. Once you've done that, you've installed it. All you have to do at this point is run Valheim one time. So load up the game, then exit back out. And the reason you need to do this is because when you initially run the game, everything that Valheim Plus has to offer is disabled by default. So what you do is you run the game that tells it that Valheim Plus is installed, it runs it, and it creates that Valheim Plus config file for you. So then you're going to exit out of Valheim, and if you've already closed out of the folder that you dropped all of the files in, your main install folder for Valheim, you're going to go back to that. And once again, in order to do that, all you have to do is right click on Valheim in your Steam library, go to manage, and click browse local files. You're going to have a folder in there called BEPINEX, B-E-P-I-N-E-X, double click on that, open that up, and then you will see another folder that says config, open up that. That's where you will find the Valheim underscore plus dot CFG file. You're going to open that with any text editor you want to open that with. I like to use Notepad++. But once again, it doesn't matter what you use. You can just use regular Windows Notepad. Whatever you want to use, it's just a text file. Just open it with a text editor. Once you do that, you are going to be presented with this massive text file. And this can be a little overwhelming. Don't let it overwhelm you. It's super, super, super easy to configure all of this. You just got to take your time and go through it. And if you have any questions at all, you can go back to Valheim Plus website and you come up here and you highlight over documentation and then click documentation. Each of these sections is broken down to give you a detailed explanation of everything that you're going to configure in this file. So say you want to configure your food, you're not sure what's what, what numbers you should put in, you just click this, it takes you to it, it tells you the exact section you need to look for, so you can easily just highlight this, copy, paste it, and, and go to, or copy and click find in your text editor and just find that to go right to that section. And then this gives you a detailed explanation of how to change what you want to change to get the effect that you want. So we're going to go over a few of the things here. These are changes that I made to my game for the upcoming Let's Play that I'm doing. And it's just general things that I think the game needs improvement on. And this is what I'm using to improve said things. So you can see you got a lot of different stuff here. We got stuff talking about advanced build mode. You can configure all of your hotkeys for that. I'm not really interested in that. I think the building is fine, but this lets you do all kinds of crazy rotations and all of that if you want to do that. 
As we scroll down here a little bit, you can see you got options to change how your bed works. You got options to change how the beehives work. This is more for changing on how building works. You can change your camera settings so that if you don't like the zoom distance, you can change that. So you can zoom out even further. You can change the field of view all of that good stuff. Come down here to experience. If you think experience is gained rather slow, you can change how fast that you gain experience or you can even slow it down. And as it states here, it's a percentage. So say you wanna increase the modifier for swords and you wanna gain experience 50% faster. Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to enable it because remember, all of these different modules are disabled by default. So you would type true and then, no, it helps if you spell true right. You would type true, and then you would come over here and you would put a 50. Well, maybe you wanna make the game harder for yourself and you want experience to be 50% slower. Well, in that case, you just put a negative in front of that and now experience is going to be 50% slower. And pretty much all of them are like that when they want those kind of percentage number values. So we scroll down, you can see we can change how the fermenter works, we can change fire sources. So here we are at one of the big irritations in this game for me, and that is food. So I have changed this one to true. And then I didn't mess with this because I don't have an issue with how fast food runs out. The time at which each of the food stay, you know, as you get to each of the stages of food and you progress through food in the game, the time that those give you, that's fine for me. I think that's relatively balanced and fine. What does irritate me is that the food degrades over time, so you lose stats over time. I hate that mechanic. All you have to do is come to here. This will say false by default. Just change it to true. Once you've changed this to true and this to true, food will no longer run out over time. What will happen is when the timer runs out for the food, it will just start flashing as it's running out. And then when it stops and it's no more, your stats will instantly drop. You can see you can make a bunch of different changes to how the smelter works. If you want to speed that up, slow that down, all of that good stuff. Same thing with the furnace. Then there's a bunch of different settings here for the game itself. So you can change the game's damage multiplier per person nearby, so making mobs stronger, you can make mobs weaker, all the, all the different little configurations you would want to change for the overall game itself. You can see here you can disable portals if you want, if you want to make the game harder, you want to make it so you have to travel anywhere, all of that good stuff. Force it so the console is always available for you, which I don't know why you'd need that because you don't need a mod to do this. You can do that without a mod. You can have giant portal names show up over the portals if you want. So and then we get to items, which is another big one for me. So I changed this to true to enable this whole section here which is the item section. And this one right here is a big one for me. This enables you to use the teleporters with anything. So you're not restricted by metal and all of that. And this other one isn't too big for me. This isn't something that like really bugs me, but it's here and it's a nice quality of life thing. So I went ahead and I made the change. This is stack size multiplier. This is a percent. So as it says here, if the thing would normally stack to 100 and you put 50 here, it's going to stack to 150. So I just changed it to 50. This is going to increase the stack size of everything in the game by 50%. The next one I enabled is the HUD. So you can see here, HUD options enabled to true. And this one just is another little quality of life thing here. And uh, that is to allow you to see the numerical values of your stamina. I just like seeing numbers, so I enabled it. Now, another really nice one here is it allows you to see your ammo that you have equipped on your bow and the count of that ammo. So to enable that, all you have to do is just put a one there, and that's gonna show you whenever you have your bow equipped, then the ammo value will pop up there. If you put it to two, then it will always show the ammo value. I'm not going to need this in the let's play that I'm doing, so I left it to zero, but if I was going to use bows, I would definitely enable this one. Another nice little quality of life thing that you can get here, and this is another module that you'll have to enable to make this useful, is the ability to craft from chests. I don't really have any issues going to get my stuff from my chests in order to craft things, so I am i didn't enable any of that. But if you do want that feature so that you don't have to go grab stuff out of your chests, you do have that option here. As we scroll down, you can see you can change gathering amounts. I don't have any problems with the gathering. The game doesn't feel too grindy to me. You can do the same thing with harvesting the different pickup stuff. So you can change how many berries, mushrooms, all of that you get. You can change the durability of all of your items. 
You can increase the armor value of stuff if you want to do that, modify how your kiln works, change things on the map. Here is the next one that I have enabled and that is play under the player section here. And this is just a quality of life one that's like, I don't, I mean, I guess the game wants you to waste things. I just, I don't know why. I don't know. I think this is an absolutely fantastic feature. So I enabled it. You, it stops you from placing things to crops too close together. So you don't end up with crops that say that they're too close and then you have one dying it's just a nice little quality of life feature because i mean you can eventually get to the point where you can plant stuff far enough away anyway and it's like meh it just meh it's just one of those things as we scroll down a little bit here i have also enabled this which skips the intro because don't need to see that skips the arrived because don't need to announce i have arrived every time i've showed up and oh my god yes this one skips the freaking tutorials there really needs to be an option in the game to skip tutorials once you've played it Scroll down a little bit more, another big one for me is stamina. This allows you to modify your stamina usage for everything. I left the encumbrance the same, so it's gonna drain when I'm encumbered the same as it normally would. Don't have an issue with that. Everything else I've reduced by 50% and I've increased the stamina regen by 100%. Stamina usage for all of this other stuff, for each of the tools and weapons and all of that stuff, I decreased all of that by 50%. As we scroll down, you can see there's, you can change structural integrity, you can change how the ward works, you can change the wagon, the mount, all that stuff, how that works. This is the next one that I've changed and that is the rows and stuff for your inventory. I just did a bunch, you can see here what I've increased, I've highlighted. I just increased a bunch of inventory slots, uh, especially the player because the player has like very limited inventory. And here's the section for crafting from chests. So if you enable the other one that we talked about previously above, you would also need to enable this. You can change your windmill. You can change the spinning wheel. You can change player projectiles. A lot of different stuff here that's just kind of allows you to fully customize your game. And that's it for the config file. Once again, if you have any questions, this does a pretty good job at explaining what each of these sections do but if you need further explanation the Valheim Plus website goes into great detail on each of these things. Now I want to show you how to install this on your server specifically servers on G Portal. Now G Portal has not reached out to me to talk about this specifically however they are a sponsor of mine and I do benefit if you use my link down in the description to sign up for an account for them. You do too if you buy a server from them using my link below you'll get a discount and you also help support the channel. They also make it incredibly easy to install the Valheim Plus mod and set it up. I also have a guide showing you how to purchase and set up your Valheim server on G Portal. So if you have no idea how to go about doing that, check the link down below for the description on that. I'm not going to cover any of that in this video. All you have to do is come down here to where it says basic settings. It's going to allow you to configure a bunch of different stuff on your Valheim server. What you're after right here is the Valheim Plus mod. Click activate, click save. That's going to save everything for you, activate and install the mod, run your server, turn your server off. That's going to ensure that the config file that you're going to config here gets created. Once you've done that, you can come down here and you can download the client mod from here if you have not already. And then you can go through and they have the exact same options that we just went through in that config file in a absolutely beautiful little screen here that you can just go through and make all of the changes that you want to make to your game right here super quick and easy and you can also search things so for example say i want to change stamina i type in stamina here and it's going to show me all of the stuff for stamina listed right here getting rid of all the others filters it nice and easy same with anything else you get the idea you know how a search bar works that's it that's all there is once you've done that once you've made your config here and set all of these settings to the way that you want them all you have to do is click save start your server then once you've started your server and you have it installed client side you don't have to set the config file twice once you have the config file for your server and you have Valheim Plus installed on your client side, once you connect to the server, the server's using the settings that you configured here. You don't have to worry about the client side. The client side that we just talked about before we got to this section here, 
Those settings are what you're going to see if you go to single player. As long as you have the mod installed, when you connect to the server, you're automatically just going to use all the server settings. I know that may be self-explanatory for some people, but other people get confused with this stuff really easy. So I just want to make sure that that is clear. Now, if for any reason at all, you want to disable Valheim Plus and go back to the base game, it's super easy to do. So you're going to, once again, go to Steam, go to Valheim, right click on it, click manage, browse local files. That's gonna bring up where the game is installed. In that main folder there, you should see a file called doorstop underscore config.ini. You open that in any text editor you want, whatever you wanna use. And on the third line here, right here, where it says enabled true, you change that to false. And then if you ever want to re-enable Valheim Plus for whatever reason, you just change that back to true. That's it. One true or false will enable or disable it. Then once you've changed it to whatever you want, whether you want to disable it or enable it, you just save that file and exit. All right, well, hopefully you have found this video informational and helpful. If you did, consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other Valheim content. And I don't just cover Valheim, I cover all kinds of different games, so you never know when I'm going to be making guides for a game that you may be playing. I wanna give an absolutely massive thank you and shout out to my supporters on Patreon for making this episode possible. Y'all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to join my Lee Crow Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and show your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.